Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're watching one of my videos, welcome. If you're a regular viewer of my videos, also welcome. I appreciate you being here and taking a look at what I create. If you don't know who I am, and I'm Ronald Segovia. I'm an illustrator and CG artist trying to make it as an artist. In this instance, I'm making this illustration, trying to revisit a few concepts I did a while back about this traditional Halloween monsters. And I thought at the time I didn't do the concepts justice because what I had in mind was something along the lines of what you can see by the end of this video. And if you follow me in other social media, you've already seen this finish piece. If you're interested in the process, feel free to stick around and I'll mention a few, a few things that I do in regards to digital painting that you might find useful. And if you like the type of content that I create, consider subscribing. It helps me a bunch, it's completely free for you and it absolutely makes my day. So with further ado, this is the process for this illustration. If you see me here, I created sort of a, a shape or the, I created an alpha for the character. It's a great way to separate what you want to paint from the rest. After doing this for a really long time, and coming from a traditional background in regards to painting, I came to the conclusion that if you're trying to make like realistic looking illustrations, the best way I've found to this point is to sort of think of it as if you're airbrushing in a way. So when people use airbrush, they usually mask out things that they don't want to paint and they just use their brush to paint the parts that they do. And playing around with that is the way that you're able to get volume and uh, lighting and all that stuff. So here you see me using that same shape, putting it on top and turning it. Uh, it's been a really long time since I used this technique, but basically I turned it turned it into a clipping mask. Sorry if my English is not perfect, it's my second language, but hopefully it's not a big problem for you. So having said that, if you see me here, I create a clipping mask on top of the original shape and I added the gradient, the base gradient that I added was thinking that the light was coming from the top right, creating occlusion towards the lower right, the, the lower left, sorry, rather. And playing around with that, it's important if you're starting out as uh, an illustrator or as an artist, because it gives you the, the possibility to light any project that you have at your disposal so it's a it's a really neat tool to be able to uh, think of a lighting scenario and apply that to your work you see me here i'm using a really uh, soft brush with that same concept in mind of uh, an airbrush you see me here i'm masking of the Air, so that way I can separate that shape a little bit better and have that sharp edge uh, near where the hair touches the skin of the character and this comes from well in a in a more recent thing it comes from an artist that I follow and it's it's really awesome maybe you should take a look at his videos if you haven't uh, I'm gonna add him on the on the comments of this video because I cannot recall his channel right now 
but he was uh, talking in one of his videos and I think he mentioned it in some others about this this thing of playing around with sharp and soft edges it's a great way it's a great way to get uh, a really nice digital digital painting because it allows you or it helps you to create volumes in your painting or in your art me coming from a traditional painting background this is something that sort of comes uh, a second nature at the point where I'm at because you get used to it you basically are you you take it for granted but when you transition to digital painting it's not for granted you have to make that happen when you're doing it in a traditional way or media you the the brush helps you do that because the way you you put the brush on top of of what you're painting it can create a sharp edge or a soft edge or you can smooth it blending it with what you have there already and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm going back to this thing of airbrushing because when you're airbrushing you're not you're not painting directly like you're not touching the canvas you're basically pushing uh, material towards the canvas or the painting just splashing the the painting with color or shades of of material so if you use that concept you can get like really nice uh, blended uh, strokes in your painting of course because it's digital you can mix it up because I have this background in my mind I'm mixing techniques up I'm mixing airbrush in this case with for example wash so wash you can literally take or acrylic you can take the, the like right up uh, uh, right from the, the from the color uh, bar thing container and take that and just put it on the canvas and you're gonna get a really sharp color and uh, cover what you have uh, under that so there's a, th that's also possible uh, in traditional mediums you can you can combine airbrush with acrylic and so on and so forth so with that in mind if uh, that's what I'm playing with I'm, I'm playing with the fact that you that you can have in some parts of a character uh, soft edges versus sharp edges and mixing it in with the parts that are supposed to look soft in regards to how the light hits it or affects it if you want to think a little bit more about this lighting thing the basic principle it's you put a light on one side you get occlusion on the other side it's that simple if you want to get a little bit more into that subject i actually made a video about that same thing uh, trying to use 3d to to test that out the reason that i mentioned the video that it's it, it's a good practice at least to try out in in 3d if you are using blender for example it's useful because you you have infinite amount of lights and you have infinite amount of assets that you can play around and see how all those objects interact with each other in terms of lighting and it's it's not only cheap it's completely free so it, it as long as you have a computer that can run blender you can test what i'm saying uh, out and try to replicate it in your work 
and so it's it's an interesting uh, test that you can do when, when it comes to lighting and light positioning and that sort of thing so yeah if you're interested in that they have a video about that there, there's probably other people that have tackle the same subject in better ways than me uh, for sure like us anything that helps you in your progress uh, on becoming an artist I would uh, put effort and time into that so here you just see me trying to find the shapes and, and present them in the best way I can. I actually I feel like it at some point it lost some of the gradient that I did in the beginning of the whole thing, um, because I was trying to, of course I'm trying to define shapes. So sometimes if you, because we're not machines, you can lose a little bit of that uh, soft radiation that comes from using a gigantic brush and like you're trying to replicate something that it, it's not there. Also, by the way, I just wanted to point this out. This this whole lighting setup, it's not, I, I'm not using reference for this. This is this comes from like this comes from practice as long as you practice uh, this concepts you can replicate it more effectively in your work now going a little bit more in depth in regards to why am i making this character and why why a Frankenstein and all that. I'd say that goes a little bit deeper. And yeah, in regards to subject matter, uh, I think I've, I've always, this is a, a really personal thing, I would say. I've always felt like the other in, in some ways, or like I'm, I'm not that much part of group of a group or groups so uh, this this subject of of the the monsters in these movies it's is kind of appealing to me like especially like if you look at Frankenstein it's completely a character that is misunderstood of course, the original story, it's not that <laughs> Franken uh, the, the Frankenstein monster wasn't all that awesome because, of course, there's a lot of context there. But um, there is also the representation in, 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 in media of this character actually well, if you see like uh, Bang Helsing, if you see, for example, Bang Helsing in that movie, you can see a version of Frankenstein. That he's he's not bad. He's a benevolent character, but he's portrayed uh, in in the wrong uh, light. So that this whole thing about pushing what you don't know to to be an outsider that sort of thing it's also it's it I, I would say it's what I find interesting about all these characters in our zeitgeist it's it's not uh, it's not only this character there are many that are sort of in the in this universe of course, it, it there's also another uh, like it, there are levels to this. 
what I'm mentioning. But that's originally in a, I would say, like more innocent way. That's that's sort of where um, I find interest in that. Uh, a great representation of what I'm mentioning, but this 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 doesn't hit. Uh, also, other things that I'm interested uh, in is, for example, Shrek. The is a character that is completely like he he went out of society and because he was basically tired of of being seen a, as as a monster, and he just wanted to to be left alone. So. Yeah, it, it it's it's just that. Uh, yeah, if you see me here, um, defining shapes as much as I can. Some some of the features on the character, I wasn't that happy with the way it turned out by the end. Like for example, the mouth, I wasn't that happy with how it turned out, but it. Overall, I like the character, so I just decided to leave it as is because I, I like the the way it turned out, uh, the overall of the illustration. So a uh, great way to think about it is that if you're defining already, if you first you define the shape and then you can get into the whole oh how the light is affecting this object and how it, it's uh, projecting shadows in regards to the other objects and so on and so forth actually i just noticed a mistake that i didn't notice before i i rotated the character and i didn't rotate the the eyes uh, highlights anyways doesn't matter that much you can see me here uh, playing around with the alpha of the character with this idea in mind what I'm saying about soft and hard edges on on shapes in in this instance of the character I added some strings of hair that you can see that are out of focus because those are farther away from the camera and you can see me in a little bit add some more than sharp edge with that in mind as well which adds appeal to to the illustration also you saw me that i have a, a background that is like high contrast in this case red but you can use different colors as well that's a great way to test out the alpha of what you're doing so makes it easy to to see if you miss something uh, if you put in different backgrounds of different colors it's easy to see oh I, m I made a mistake here in the alpha oh this doesn't look right so you, it's easier to go back and fix that also you notice that you might notice that I have all these layers that are not labeled this is because I'm doing this for myself and not I'm not passing this on to anybody else but you might still uh, end up paying for that so I recommend to everyone that is starting out with painting to label uh, your uh, your files and your layers because it's 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 just a good practice if if you if I messed up you, you see me here that I locked all the other layers that's enough I did that because I'm pretty sure for anyone that has been painting in in digital for quite some time this has happened to you I'm sure so you might relate you end up painting on the wrong layer by mistake and if you don't check uh, often if you're not you you start to get obsessed by checking that you might end up painting the whole thing in on the wrong layer and you might have to go back and fi uh, fix some of it or figure out a way to to separate it especially especially 
if you're working with a client or if you're working in-house changes are going to to be there like it's it's normal to to get a request to change something so uh, it's a it's a part of the process so if you can incorporate that into your pipeline it helps uh, your life <laughs> not be as complicated as if you're just painting in in one layer in this case i'm as i said i'm working for myself this is a piece i did because i wanted to do it so you can see me here painting just most of the character in one layer with a caveat i have some layers that are separated and for a reason here I, in this layer, I'm defining volumes, right? I have the other one that takes takes care of the alpha. I added another one that has the highlight on the eyes because I don't want that. I want that to be sharp, edged, and consistent throughout. Doesn't matter how much I paint. I want that to stay the same so i separate that into a different layer so if you think about that when you're creating something it's a great way to to get around certain pitfalls i would say when you're painting something so at some point a little bit further in the video here also you see me um, Going back and forth but you see me here i was using i use the smear tool if you haven't used it it's a great tool to soften and blend together uh, different uh, shadings like you, you paint something you just go with a brush and then you select the the smear tool and you can get away with blending it that way is actually really useful also you can blur that's that's also another technique that is useful I don't know if it's it was noticeable but there was a point in in the painting process that I actually took the whole layer and added uh, a really uh, low blur to the whole thing so that way everything mixes together so playing around with that it's is what ends up adding to the over overall painting so here i think i i was already happy with most of the volumes and shapes of the character so let's see yeah i uh, by this point, I am starting to to think of how can I add textures to to this character. I'm trying to get the all the pores that you can see on your skin. I'm trying to get some of that into a character because I'm thinking that what would happen if this character was actually real. So playing with this, I didn't like what I did in the beginning. So what I ended up doing was a technique that I learned when I was studying illustration that is really nice for this sort of thing. And you can get like hyper realism out of like super cool. And basically you turn a soft brush into a scatter and you can play around with it depending on what exactly you're trying to achieve and i actually because it's been so long it's it's not my main focus to to paint this way uh, because stylistically i enjoy when a painting has sort of the brushes still because uh, I I was heavily influenced by impressionism 
when I was studying, it was, I would say, the movement that I found the, I enjoyed the most. Because before that, the, in to the ones that are experts on this, um, I'm sorry if I'm butchering it, but there was a period of time when everybody was painting, trying to remove the brushes from the final painting. The, I think the technique was sfumato. So the whole point of it was to make it disappear, the, the fact that you actually painted that. And I think there they have theories. I'm not sure, so don't quote me on this. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they have theories on how they did it, but they're not totally sure on how they did it. Apparently, it was a process of very thin layers of painting on top of each other to the point that you couldn't see any of the brush strokes. I think that was the original process that they did but i'm not sure and i'm not 100 percent sure if that was the case but that was that movement existed and it got to a point in classical painting that people the artists started to stray away from that and and actually put the brushes incorporate the the, the brush strokes into the work and it was a wonderful, wonderful period of of the painting uh, history that it, I find influential, and that's why I don't I don't use this technique that often. I I use it. I've used it for advertising work. That actually my my main. Uh, work experience has been in relates to to advertising so i've used it uh, for that but in my personal work i often find myself leaving some of that brush uh, on the on the final piece in this specific case i wanted it to look more realistic so I, I had to go back and, and revisit this, this concept that I'm mentioning. With all that I said, I still kept some of the brushes in because what's the point <laughs> to me personally? Like what's the point of doing all this if, if it's not showing that it's an actual painting in some aspects? So I kept some of it. And also thinking about something that a teacher of mine told me at some point. I don't remember which one it was. I'm sorry. I have a terrible memory. Um, but it was... The idea is that if you're gonna uh, put details on something, you taper that detail. You're not gonna detail the entire thing. You're gonna detail your main focus. Uh, point of interest and then you you fade that out you don't need all the details in the world within your painting because you can end up actually messing up your painting if you add too much because it, it, it becomes busy in in some ways well going back to what i was saying before you can see me here uh, playing around with the scatter of the of the brush it's this is an old technique for me at least uh, but re really useful i i couldn't get exactly the same brush work that i remember using originally but i got to to a decent enough point that uh, i was sort of happy with what i end up with and yeah you just have to play around with it the, the first time I used this technique I actually uh, I, I didn't have a tablet 
so I painted the whole realistic thing with just the mouse I didn't have it I didn't have a, a tablet at home uh, when I was studying so yeah you just have to do what you have to do sometimes and yeah you can see me here playing around with it you you if you look at skin or any object at like completely exposed exposed to light you're gonna see micro details on it if you get close enough so I'm trying to get a little bit of that uh, I didn't got to a point of uh, subsurface scattering but I think I I did get to to an interesting texture there. I was also playing around with the fact that this is supposed to be a uh, quote unquote undead character so I was trying to add that texture as well and I think uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It looks nice uh, overall. It blends together nicely and going back to what I was saying about the layers being separated you can see that all that texture or most of it is in a separate layer the ones that are not it was a mistake because the idea was that if I wasn't happy with it I can just go back delete the layer and do it again or scrap it just forget about it and and just keep it plain uh, painting and that's it also there's there's another aspect to this that skin is not the same color everywhere so there are points in your skin that are darker than others depending on the the blood vessels under your skin and how close for example uh, if it's a part where you have bone or if it's it's more fat and uh, tissue that sort of thing affects the color of the skin so uh, that's that also adds realism to whatever you're painting so something to consider you see me here adding all this other details To the eyelids and trying to blend the shapes a little bit better trying to find the, the year of course this is more of a cartoony character mixed with realism and also the, the reasoning behind why I don't know if I already mentioned this but if I did I apologize but the idea behind me doing all this uh, is that I always thought of actually turning some of my creations to collectible toys or uh, sculptures so I wanted to showcase that in in some way and I've been putting that off because I it's only me in this case I, I'm just one <laughs> artist uh, so often you come up with a sketch and oh this could be awesome for this or this can be uh, this could be awesome for this other thing but not always you have the chance to like really get into it and and take it to to a level that you're happy with it uh, because you're working or you have to take care of other things and it's not always that you have that chance so I wanted to give this a real chance of being out there in the world so yeah I added also uh, I tried to add a little bit of texture there to the pants thinking also of the different textures of the character uh, if it's metal if it's skin if it's cloth and separate that 
uh, because it, it also adds to the realism of whatever you're creating. I think by this time I was already happy with the result I got. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing or hitting that like. It helps me a bunch. Here you can see a bunch of crashes on Photoshop. I'm not the only one that happens that happens to I'm pretty sure and uh, if you make it made it this long thank you all for watching there's link is in the description of this video to merch with this character thank you all for watching hope to see you next time bye